Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Anderson from Kellogg Community College going over statistics. This is uh, Chapter 9, Section 1, Testing the Difference Between Two Means Using the Z-Test. All right, well, let's get started here. What's the purpose of uh, looking at two different averages or two different means? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, this to compare two samples to see if there's a significant difference. Whoops, <laughs> handwriting's not as good as it us usually is with this pen today. Now, what's going to be important about today's section is that we are going to look at these two samples to see if there's differences. Um, you have to make sure that these samples were picked randomly. And because we're doing z-tests, we're going to make sure that n is greater than 30, or if n is less than 30, it's normally distributed. Um, but I think for the purpose of the book, with the exception of maybe one um, one problem or two, um, the n or sample size is going to be bigger than 30. Um, but what's more important today is that we're going to look at these two groups have to be independent, and in um, in in stuff, um, you know, in in the real world, they will look at two samples like a control and an experimental group to see if there was some kind of um, change uh, that was significant in the other group. Um, now, what's important about these uh, these experiments is that since we're talking about two different types of averages, you have to make your null hypothesis. You have to make that null hypothesis where the average or mu of 1 is the same as mu of 2. This is showing that there's no change. And our null hypothesis has always been this idea that there is no change. There is no um, adaptation from one to the other. So in a two-tailed test, you're merely saying, hey, I just am telling you that uh, mu1 is different than mu2. And in the right-tailed test, you're saying, well, I think mu sub 1 is greater than mu sub 2. So the second group was you know, statistically significantly higher in their average. And then uh, the left-tailed test would be less than. All right, so that, for, that uh, br basically breaks down what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be comparing two averages instead of one average like we did in uh, Chapter 8. Okay, let me move down the screen a little bit here. All right, so going to the five types of hypothesis testing, or z-tests. Um, now, there's five steps, and these five steps have been the same. Uh, pretty much since chapter 8 here, you're going to, for step 1, is to state the hypothesis. Whoops, excuse me. All right, sorry about that, having some pen problems here. State hypotheses, which is going to be your, whoops, that's, a, that's singular, I want plural here. Um, you're going to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Step 2 is to find your critical value which I'll abbreviate as CV. And you're going to find your critical value by looking at your alpha. And your alpha will give you the um, where you should go to your Z table to find your critical value. Um, and then you're going to compute the Z score. And we're going to call it the test score. But uh, compute the T score to compare versus the control, uh, the the critical value, and see hopefully uh, that your critical value is inside the critical region, and then you can make uh, your decision. And this is where we're going to make our pictures here. And then step five is going to be to summarize your results. And that's going to be to tell me whether we are going to reject the null hypothesis or we will not reject the null hypothesis. Now, um, just as a, a side note, from chapter 8, um, when we had one average, we would take our um, sample mean, subtract our mu, divide it by our standard deviation, divide it by the square root of our sample size. Now, 
th things are a little different. With two averages, um, our numerator um, starts out with x bar sub 1 minus x bar sub 2. So we're going to subtract the differences between these two averages and then subtract from them uh, the average of mu1 minus the average of mu2. Which is kind of interesting because mu1 and mu2, if you subtract them, I mean these are the accepted um, total population averages, uh, that would be zero. So um, <laughs> this is always going to be zero, and we're going to actually use this when um, looking at our uh, at our intervals to see you know whether or not our uh, results are significant or not. So just as a little side note here, that mu sub one minus mu sub two is going to be zero, and that's make kind of makes sense if you if you look at the large population of both groups, they should be fundamentally the same. Then we have this, instead of our uh, standard deviation divided by square root of n, we have our standard deviation of the subgroup squared divided by n plus the standard deviation of the subgroup 2 divided by n. So what this gives us is a, a different formula, a little bit more complex to type in in one stroke. So when I do these problems, I'll be breaking it down to smaller pieces. So um, at the beginning of the next page, you may want to copy these formulas onto your own worksheet um, because I'm going to be um, referring back to this one when we start to do step three. All right, so uh, pause, copy it down if you want. I'm going to move on. So that move, whoops, sorry. There we go. All right, and now step five is a little bit off this uh, piece of paper or the screen right here. So I'm going to actually put step four and step five on the same thing so we can look at this, the, this uh, picture all at once here. So this might be a little bit different than the handout that you uh, downloaded for me, but um, it uh, will work out the same. A random sample of 50 hotels in each city found that the average... Now I'm going to circle just important pieces of data here. Found the average hotel roommate in New Orleans was $88.42 and Phoenix, Arizona was $80.61. The standard deviation of New Orleans was $5.62 and Phoenix was $4.83. At an alpha of 0.05, can it be concluded that there is a significant difference? Well, you may want to pause this here and try to do your alternative hypothesis and your null hypothesis. You also may want to see how far you can do this problem and then come back and check your work with me. All right, I'm assuming that you've paused or unpaused, tried this out a little bit. Here's the answer. The null hypothesis is to say that mu1 is going to be equal to mu2. And the alternative hypothesis, this is to say that mu1 is not equal to mu2. Because it really just said, can it be concluded that there is a significant difference? And this is a two-tailed test. The two-tailed test um, is um, a pretty good... I mean, two-tailed tests are um, much more uh, stringent than uh, one-tailed tests because they have much smaller critical regions in their uh, positive or negative place. Now, the, finding the critical value with an alpha of 0.05, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look this up on our z-chart, uh, which is table um, E uh, in our book here. So we're going to look this up, and what you should look at, since we're, the alpha is 0.05, we have to look at 0.9750, and 0 0.0250 and see what these critical values are. Now the critical values from the chart make plus or minus because the plus from the 0 0.9750 and the minus from the 0 0.0250 plus or minus 0.196. All right, now we're going to get to the formula. We're going to take our, um, since this is a two-tailed test, it really doesn't matter which order we go, because we're either going to get a positive or negative uh, t value here. So I'm going to take eight dollars, uh, excuse me, $88.42, so New Orleans minus Phoenix. So I'm always going to go in that order. I'm going to go New Orleans minus Phoenix um, in my problem. And that's going to be my x bar minus x bar. Uh, then I'm going to subtract my mu minus mu, which we said was zero on the previous side. And then we're going to do this careful, careful um, arithmetic here. So we're going to take our $5.62, square it, divide it by our sample size, which is 50, because we looked at 50 random hotels per city, and then $4.83 squared divided by 50. 
Okay, our numerator is going to make a difference of $7.81. Our denominator is going to be, and what I would do is I would compute this value here. So compute this one, then compute this one, and write them down. So this would be 632 thousandths and 467 thousandths. And then add those up. And this is going to be a total of uh, 1 and 99 thousandths. Um, this is from computing this and this separately. And combining them, I do 7, point, uh, 7 and 81 hundredths divided by our square root down there. And that gives me a z-score of 7.9, or 7.4, excuse me, 7.45. Now, <laughs> whoops, <laughs> that's what happens when you nudge the keys here. Um, so, we're about to make our conclusion right there. Okay, so we get our picture here. Our picture was, wow, that's not too good. Sorry about that drawing. Um, our picture was, um, we had a critical value of negative 1.96 and 1.96. Um, is our test value inside one of these critical zones? And the answer is, yeah. 7.45 is way inside the critical region. So, and, and if we would have went Phoenix minus New Orleans and then switched, flip-flopped everything backwards, we would have got a negative 7.45 instead of positive because of the numerator being negative instead of positive. Um, <laughs> we'd still get the same result. Um, therefore, for step five, we're going to reject the null hypothesis that, um, that these two um, hotel, these two cities um, are, are the same, and they're definitely not the same, definitely not the same, according to this data. All right, copy this down, uh, pause it, and I'll move on to the next problem. Okay, so moving on to the next problem here. How do p-values differ? in terms of the ordering of steps. Now, doing a p-test, um, usually there's not a lot of talk about alpha because we have our own 